PFF ranked the Cowboys backfield 32nd in the league going into 2024. You have Rico Dowdle, Ezekiel Elliott, Deuce Vaughn, Hunter Lipke. That sounds like an all pro team to me. The Browns defense going into week one is really good, which means that the Cowboys offense is going to need to run the ball effectively. The Browns have good cover corners. You got to be able to move the ball. And last year, when they really needed it, the Cowboys' run game really sputtered. For this game, how do you think that the Cowboys should deploy these backs? What gives this backfield the best chance for success? So as of right now, Zach, Rico Dowdle is on our lads. It's the site that I use, your, your RB1. And rightfully so. I think that Rico Dowdle healthy has shown enough and he's earned the right to be your starting running back. I know we brought back Ezekiel Elliott. I know we signed Dalvin Cook. I know that we are giving Deuce Vaughn a chance. Or are we Willie? We'll see if he's active. It's a, it's, we still got a long ways to go. That being said, deployment needs to look something like this. Heavy dose of Rico. Heavy 15 carries, 15 touches, because he's actually really sneaky in the passing game. I think people are going to be surpri surprised just how much Hunter Lipke is involved in this run game, whether that's as a lead blocker, a plus one player, um, sneaking out into the flats. I think three touches a game could be a vibe for Hunter Lipke. Remember, he got those two uh, uh, fourth and one calls in Miami. Obviously, he had the fumble, but I still love what I saw from Hunter Lipke in that game. He also is an extremely physical blocker, so I love what Hunter Lipke did in that game. I think what happens now in the red area and in obvious press pro situations, you get to Ezekiel Elliott. You give him chances to get you the tough yardage. Maybe he even plays some fullback in that sense. But you get to Ezekiel Elliott because of his experience. He knows how to hit certain runs. And I think that's kind of how I would deploy things week one. As the year goes on, that's another conversation. But week one, that would be my deployment. I really hope you're right about the Rico Dowdle and the 15 touches, 15 carries. As long as he's healthy, he's still showing the burst, all of that. He is your running back one. I don't, I, I don't see an argument for any other guy on this roster. Not Ezekiel Elliott, Deuce Vaughn. Obviously, the frame is not a running back one and every down guy. I, I really hope that Rico gets 15 touches in this game because he gives you the best chance for success. And like you said with the other guys, Hunter Lipke, you know, three three touches here and there, find a way to get him out into the flat. Deuce Vaughn, um, a little change of pace. Rico needs a breather. Ezekiel Elliott really wouldn't be my go-to guy after you know Rico comes off the field. Overall, the best chance you're going to have at having a successful run game, I believe, is Rico Dowdle. Yes. That's that's been the guy ever since the Cowboys signed him to that that deal that one year deal um, back when free agency started. He's really just been overlooked, and I think. Not saying the Cowboys aren't the 32nd ranked running back room in the NFL, but it just seems like Rico's been thrown to the side. Everybody just like Ezekiel Elliott somehow became the running back one, I guess, because of some draft stock eight years ago. I like the idea. Rico, just mix uh, Deuce in there, let Zeke do some pass pro, maybe some short yardage goal line stuff along with Hunter Lipke. Find a way to get all four of these guys involved because it is a sort of running back by committee right now. I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, BetUS. If you're looking for the best odds for the NFL season, Cowboys futures, live in-game betting, whatever you need, BetUS has you covered. Covered. They have huge bonuses, great odds, and fast payouts. Plus, new customers get a 125% sign-up bonus on their first three deposits. Deposit $20, get $25 more to play with. The link to sign up is in the description of today's video. Now, I have a question for you about <laughs> the juice. It's something that we talked about with the running backs um, during the draft process. Who gives this room juice? Because that's what it feels like it's lacking. If you need a play in this game against the Browns, who are you calling on in that running back room? Or who should the Cowboys call on in this game 
if they need a play. So two questions that I'm going to break down. Well, well, two. Uh, I'm going to give you two answers to kind of slice the pie. Juice. Maybe the backs aren't. You want to change the pace. The defense has kind of got a beat on kind of what you're doing, and you need some speed to the edge. Maybe two players to keep an eye on. Actually, three. Deuce Vaughn, Kevontae Turpin. How about C.D. Lamb, Zach? for a thousand here's the deal they put cd lamb in the back foot about 10 times last year just gave him regular running back runs i think with Kevontae turpin growing in this offense and gaining this the thing that scared me about turpin was did he have big mike's trust big mike is is big on trust i mean he'll, he'll play a rookie like loopy because he trusts him and he won't give a guy an opportunity like turpin because maybe he just didn't trust him we will know very early does does he know what's going on in turpin and does does, does, does he does Mike trust him? If so, I think Turpin can do some of those things where, hey, you just want to give a jet sweep. That's a carry. You just want to give a quick pitch. That's a carry. Maybe an option. Some type of change-up pitch. And I think Turpin has that ability to sneak you a few first downs. Just outrun a guy to the edge. He just has that type of electricity. So I would go Turpin, Deuce, and even C.D. Lamb could be a juice player. All that being said, if Rico's hitting it and he's getting stronger as the game goes on, you feed Rico. I think that's such an underrated part of this Cowboys run game for all of the hate that it's gotten over the offseason. For some reason, running backs didn't matter, and then the Cowboys didn't sign a running back, so they all of a sudden you know, matter. Kevontae Turpin, CeeDee Lamb, those guys can supplement some of the run game stuff, end arounds, jet sweeps you know, wide receiver screens, stuff like that. I think there's ways to get the ball to the edge without necessarily having to, you know, give the ball to Rico on a stretch or whatever. Get the ball to the edge, get some speed, because that is really what this running back room is lacking. Now, Rico is not slow. Zeke is slow. And then Deuce Vaughn's got a little bit of burst to his game, but I'm not sure how the long speed works. You need stuff. I mean, you need guys like Kevontae Turpin, even a C.D. Lamb, that can maybe get you an explosive play here and there. You can use them on motion stuff. That way the linebacker's eyes are moving. It just opens up a lot more for this run game than just straight up running it up the gut with Rico Dowdle, which I feel like was an issue last year with Pollard. There just was not a whole lot of creativity when it came to the run game. And that's one way I think it can get better in 2024, a little bit more creativity using Turpin, using Lamb, however it needs to happen. I still think, and I'm going to ask you this first, is there a way that this run game is better in week one against the Browns, who have a really good run defense, and the season moving forward? Even though you didn't sign anybody and you brought back Rico, is there a way that it gets better? I think the way it gets better is you have a better offensive line, and you have a more powerful offensive line up the middle. And I think we talked about this pre-show, Zach, we just really believe in Cooper Beebe. And honestly, at this point in his career, I think that Tyler Guyton might be a better run blocker than Tyra Smith. Don't know if he's going to be a better pass blocker, but when you talk about pin pull, you talk about double team and blocking down, Tyler Guyton put all of that on tape week one. I mean, you see him going at it with vets. Uh, I think he's not scared. So that won't be an issue at all. So I just say all that to say, Zach, when you talk about the actual truth of it all, you may have a better blocking O line than you do than you did last year. And then I think that Rico, knowing that he's the guy, I just have a feeling that he's going to want to prove people wrong. I mean, I think he runs that way. And some running backs, it, it's tough when, when Pollard being a lead guy, some running backs need, need, need to get in the rhythm. And I think that that's kind of how Rico is. And I just think that it's one of those low hanging fruit things is like, well, let me find one thing to get mad at the Cowboys about because everything else looks pretty good on, on, on paper. Let's just talk about the running back room, but you can come out week one and let's say you run for 115 yards as a team. That's a good enough for me because guess what? Dak, Dak Prescott, Jake Ferguson and CD lamb can, can win you a game as far as and cooks can win you a game via play action and stuff like that. And then as the, as the year goes on, you play way lesser run defenses. So I'm fine. I think that was an overlooked part of 2023 is because there was games where Rico was running the ball. Well, was finding that rhythm. I think back to that giants game. I think he had like 10 or 12 to, uh, carries was running the ball extremely well. And then the Cowboys take him out. Pollard gets a series or two, and it just kind of disrupted the momentum of, 
what he was doing, being that guy. He should get, you know, consistent carries. My only concern is that they maybe ruin that with Ezekiel Elliott. Let Rico get in there. Let him get in a rhythm. Let's see what he's got, because if you do need to make a move for a running back, you need to know what you got in your number one guy. 